Hello guys and welcome to another video. So a fellow booktuber who is a little bit more well known than I am has recently published her second book and that is Better Together by Christine Riccio. So I read it and I thought it would be an interesting time to talk to you guys about it. And at first I was planning on doing a reading vlog but since I remembered that Christine herself has stated multiple times and has a very infamous video about how she hates reading vlogs, I thought that I would just do an old-fashioned book talk about it. So without further ado, let's comment. Should booktubers have their books published? Okay, so first of all, I want to talk to you about the physical book. Look at this. I feel like Christine has been getting so lucky with her covers and especially with this concept. It looks great because on the back, instead of having the synopsis, it basically looks like another other cover, which makes complete sense because this book follows both of these characters who are sisters equally, so I feel like this is the best representation she could have ever asked for on the cover. And then we have the book Naked, and on my edition it has a yellow cover and a blue microphone, which I think is meant to represent Jamie's stand-up side of the story, so it's really cool. I feel like maybe in another edition it had a watermelon? I don't know, it would have been cool to get that too, but overall I would give the presentation of the physical book an 8 out of 10. I really like this one, this one gets a 10 out of 10, but I'm not really vibing with the colors was a color combination on this one, so that brings it out to an 8 out of 10, which is also pretty great. So, for those of you who don't know what this book is about, I'll explain it to you. It's basically the parent trap meets Freaky Friday. So basically the story follows Jamie and Siri, who are long-lost sisters who, for some unknown reason, meet up at a retreat and then they decide to switch places. What to say without really spoiling it? Jamie followed her dad over to Los Angeles and decided to live with him while Siri got stuck with her mom in New Jersey because she was the youngest and she didn't even have a choice. So the story follows them and kind of what happens after all that, you know, family drama and basically childhood trauma. So let's start this discussion by uh, discussing my favorite of the two sisters, Siri. So Siri is a ballet dancer who recently had a life-changing injury, which means that she can no longer pursue her dream or her preferred career path. So right now she's very depressed, very angry, so she goes to this retreat in order to find herself and see what else she could do with her life. The first thing that I have to comment from Siri is that even though I loved her character arc, her development was great, and I loved her by the end of it, is that um, she doesn't curse, and instead of cursing, she's like a walking thesaurus. Let me find some examples. So, instead of shit, she says excrement, and I thought this was going to be like a one-time thing, but no, instead of hell, she says what in the underworld? Yes, folks, and it gets uh, it gets worse from there. Ah, yes. Instead of fuck, she says intercourse. So she says stuff like, are you intercoursing kidding me? Not only does Siri say excrement and underworld, she also refers to assholes as gluteus maximus trenches. The one she brought up the most was the intercourse. That one I hated. She, she just uh, shouts like, intercourse! instead of the F word, and that made me hate her for a long time. And then the other most important part about her is her love interest, which happens to be Jamie's sister. I thought this was a good inclusion, and I feel like um, their story was very sweet. It was only developed for like five days max, so that was fun. I liked their chemistry, and overall I'd give their relationship a 7 out of 10. It was good, it was enjoyable but I don't think it was necessary to the story as much as Jamie's watch, which leads us to talking about Jamie, the problematic child. So, Jamie is the oldest of the two sisters, which means that Siri has always been kind of like her shadow. So, being an older sister and a younger sister myself, 
I have been in both of these spots. I have wanted to shout at my sister. I've wanted to have everything she had, have had all my favorites be her favorites, and I have also had my own shadow. My little brother, I found him so annoying for so long because all of my favorites became his favorites and I wanted to be unique. So blue was my color, not his. And we got into so many arguments because of this. So I understand Jamie being scared of Siri kind of like taking over her life. I understand that. But at the same time, uh, Jamie is freaking crazy. She has a complete breakdown in like the third act of this book, which makes sense because she has a lot of pent up anger towards her mom because, spoiler alert, her mom had made young Siri believe that Jamie never existed. She literally took her to therapy in order to convince her that uh, Jamie, her older sister, was just her imaginary friend. So imagine her surprise when they meet up at the retreat to find that she actually has a real life sister and Jamie's surprised to find that her own mother erased her from her little sister's memories. <gasps> what a great mom, am I right? So basically, uh, towards the third act of this book, Jamie has a complete and utter breakdown. And uh, on page 359, Siri summarizes what I thought about Jamie all along. Jamie is not okay. <laughs> She literally is and she has so much pent up anger and aggression towards her mother and her father that uh, it just comes pouring out of her in the third act. The fact that she just manipulated everyone into having this reunion and especially Siri because she wanted to have like a joke for her next gig is horrible and something they never discuss and that I found horrible on her part. Uh, but basically, Jamie is a failed stand-up comedian because she had a really bad gig one time and then she lost all her confidence, which leads us to her love interest, which I feel like is more necessary than the series because apparently she has really, really strong commitment issues because obviously her parents are divorced. So uh, he helps her find her way back to romance and letting people into her life. And I feel like he is more integral to her development than Siri's love interest is to hers. Okay, so the way the sisters got reunited was kind of cute, kind of funny, but can you really tell me that in real life, a person who is showering like two stalls away from you could not hear you scream and crash into the ground and then scream again and then like you throw something at their face? Would that person really not hear you? Is this girl really like, Talia, are you like, are you deaf or something? Maybe she is. I don't know. Maybe I'm super insensitive. She wasn't deaf before. What the heck? Are you really not going to like stop showering for a freaking minute and take a look outside and see if everyone's okay? Literally two people crashed two stalls from yours and then they started screaming for a good minute and then you you didn't go out of check. Talia, are you okay? Also, there's there's a character in here, I think it's one of Siri's friends called uh, Celia, I'm guessing. Um, and I have learned from this book and from what other book was I in? Oh, <laughs> was I in? In The Seven Husbands of Emily Hugo. I do not like my name being in books. So, Christine, if you're watching this, I do not appreciate that choice of name. So one of the best parts of this book was the family dynamic, because if you don't know, Christine Riccio's parents are divorced themselves, so I feel like this was a very personal topic for her and something that she knew quite a bit about. So you can clearly tell that all those family dynamics and relationships between the characters were very natural and probably even based on her own story. So she gets a pass on that. They were very good and I really enjoyed them. It was really eye-opening to what can happen to a family that is so broken and how to move from that. Also, on another positive note, this book is super positive towards therapy and especially family therapy and I found that to be so refreshing because especially Siri was super open to it since she'd been exposed to it very early on. Jimmy, on the other hand, was completely against it at first and I got so mad. But at the end of the story, she was more open to it and they decided to do it as a family and I thought that was a very good message to have in her book, so props to you. Okay, moving on, we have the writing and the world building. I thought the writing was much better. You can totally tell that Christine had improved. If you didn't tell me, I wouldn't know this book was written by a booktuber who had only written one other book in her life. 
So props to her. You can totally tell her development and she she got really good at it. So nicely done. You could tell in her debut novel, but in this one, I feel like you couldn't tell at all that she's a booktuber with not much writing and publishing experience. So way to go, Christine. The world building. I do feel like um, she put a new spin into The Parent Trap and The Freaky Friday by combining them both. So it was good. It didn't feel like it was a copy and paste of any of those stories. So I feel like she got away with it in the end because she put her own little twist to it. In terms of plot and the flow, I feel like it maybe took a little bit long for the sisters to meet in the beginning and for them to start with their parent trap plan. I feel like more than 120 pages for that to start and for them to meet their respective parents. But besides that, I feel like the only other bump in the story was around like the middle when Jamie's just being a crazy daughter and she was just having like a really fun time with her new significant other. Uh, I thought that was a bit slow, but I did really enjoy the confrontation in Las Vegas and then everything that happened afterwards where they were just trying to fix everything. In case you were wondering about Christine's debut novel, Again But Better, uh, those characters do make an actual cameo in this book and I thought that was pretty funny, <laughs> but it also made no sense. It was just like a way to get a uh, Siri to have an internship and something to do at the end of the book. So that was fine. I, I, I didn't feel like it fit in too well, but it was just like a fun little addition to the story. And then we have to discuss the Game of Thrones and the fandom reference and the pop culture reference in this book. So in the first book, I feel like maybe the pop culture references were kind of overused, but at the same time, they worked because uh, the setting was, I feel like, 2012 or something like that. So it really made you feel like you went back in time to 2012. But in this one, since it is present time, I feel like she didn't use as many. The only one that I feel like was a little bit out of place is that I don't feel like Timothy Chalamet would... <laughs> I don't feel like he would hire uh, an amateur comedian to do a 20 minute stand up gig at his birthday party. But you know, a girl can dream that that would happen. But going back to the Game of Thrones things, I have watched a video of Christine talking about this and she said that in the original book she was going to write parents that were obsessed with Harry Potter fandom, but due to recent events and recent information that has come out on J.K. Rowling, uh, she decided not to do that, to like drop her. And then she chose Game of Thrones, which I feel like is a little bit less appropriate because in one of the scenes, they do mention that uh, the parents read Game of Thrones to them when they were little. So very appropriate. They do say they like censure some stuff, but at the same time, not the best, especially for young girls. But I don't know. I feel like it's, I'm, I do like that she changed it and it's not Harry Potter anymore, but Game of Thrones for children. <laughs> And then finally, my overall thoughts. I thought it was a very enjoyable story. I feel like I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is just like really enjoyable, a good time. It didn't change my life, but you know, I would watch a movie of it. Also, speaking of, I feel like this was very cinematographic. I could totally picture everything that was happening in my mind. And I think it would be like a good fun movie. It, it'd be a bit confusing because when they switch places, they also switch bodies, but they can see their own faces, but everyone else see the other sister's faces. So that would be a bit confusing. But overall, I like this book. I think that you should pick it up if you like uh, contemporary romances with a magic twist, which is apparently Christine's specialty. So yeah, please leave a like if you like this video, comment down below if you have read the book, if you've liked this, or if you haven't read the book, and what you think about booktubers having published books. Please let me know, I really want to start that conversation down in the comments down below. So subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell button so you get notifications every time I post a new video. I post videos very frequently on this channel, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!